Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about mastitis, and I know a lot of people in our class uh, know a lot about cattle and work with cattle and know the basics of mastitis when it comes to working with dairy cattle, but it's a little different for dairy goats, so I was going to kind of give you all some information about what I see and how I work with mastitis at our dairy goat farm in Athens. So mastitis is the term used to describe inflammation of the mammary glands, which may be caused by a number of different microorganisms, mostly bacteria, but it can also be caused by viruses, fungi, and also can be caused by injury to the udder. Of particular importance in dairy goats, mastitis can develop in any type and breed of doe regardless of its milk yield. Mastitis is an issue because it can decrease the quality of milk and the amount of milk and it can also cause a decrease in weight gain of the animals which can thereby reduce productivity and farm profitability. So mastitis can be clinical or subclinical. Clots or serum in the milk are signs of clinical mastitis and subclinical mastitis is only detectable using a test or counting inflammatory cells in the milk or culturing milk in a lab. And so the organisms that infect the udder of the goats are similar to those in cows. Coagulase negative staphylococci bacteria are generally the most prevalent and can cause persistent infections that can result in increased cell counts and low-grade mastitis with some recurring clinical episodes. The level of infection and incidence of mastitis due to Staphylococcus aureus bacteria tend to be lower, less than 5% usually, but it can result in persistent infections that do not generally respond to therapy well. There's some other ones, stuff as streptococcal intramammary infections, which can occur both in subclinical and clinical cases, but they're usually much less frequent in dairy goats than in cattle. So you have to watch out for teat damage, and the teat end can be damaged as a result of overmilking, uh, poorly maintained milking machinery, rough removal of clusters, uh, getting teats caught on wire, you know, anything outdoors, or teat biting by babies. So teat end damage can allow bacteria to enter the teat canal, and that can lead to mastitis. So some of the first symptoms you may see are a fever above 105 degrees Fahrenheit, appetite loss, uh, slow moving goats, depressed goats, uh, the mammary gland may be hard, swollen, or red in color, the milk can be watery or yellow or clotted, you know, it just doesn't look like normal milk, uh, the udder can be very hot and sensitive to the touch. So for acute mastitis, it's usually marked by the hard, swollen red mammary glands, as well as the milk secretions that are watery and yellow, and that's due to the presence of the white blood cells in the milk. But the chronic mastitis is usually marked by the hard lumps on the udder, and that can be accompanied by an inability to produce milk and a hot feeling to the touch. So diagnosis of mastitis in the dairy goat is based on bacteria bacterial cultures of milk and a somatic cell count test. However, the somatic cell count test should be interpreted carefully as there's poor discrimination between infected and non-infected animals, especially in the later stages of lactation. This is partially because there's a higher proportion of cells that are epithelial in origin in goat milk than in cow's milk, so it's harder to monitor in dairy goats than it is in cattle. So treatment depends on severity of the infection. Microorganisms associated with mastitis in dairy goats are commonly controlled with antibiotics. So mild cases may respond to a localized treatment using an intramammary preparation of antibiotic into the infected other after you uh, strip the teat out of all the milk. So we've had some cases of mastitis on the farm and usually what I have to do is strip the teat out and then there's an antibiotic and it has this cream in it and you basically have to insert it into the bottom of the udder and squeeze all the cream into the udder. It's pretty gross. Uh, but sometimes, you know, they suggest not using these antibiotics very often because continued use of these agents can promote 
antibiotic resistance among the bacterial populations that cause mastitis. Uh, and there's also no antibiotics that are labeled for use in sheep or goats for the treatment of mastitis. So therefore all treatment of mastitis for sheep and goats is considered extra label and it's supposed to be done under the advice and under the supervision of a veterinarian. Uh, and especially for severe cases, you will undoubtedly require more aggressive treatment and you should consult your farm vet. So there are several steps that you can take to prevent mastitis in your dairy herd. So proper milking procedures and good environmental sanitation are needed to reduce the prevalence and spread of infection, especially that post dipping after milking is very important to prevent bacteria from getting into the teats. Uh, you need to make sure you have a milk order implemented so nobody is going out of their order and nobody's standing on other people's stands or you know bacteria is not spreading from one stand to another in your herds uh, you also need to do a dry period treatment if anybody has mastitis and you want to isolate your cases you don't want anybody else getting this bacteria and your chronically infected goats should probably be cold. It's just the best uh, prevention to keep the rest of your goats healthy. All right, so here are some of the references I used for my PowerPoint. And of course, some of that came from experience on my dairy goat farm. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reply below and happy milking.